Happy Friday, everyone. Going into the weekend. Excited, excited, excited. Hope y'all are doing wonderful. Hope everybody is doing great. Dun, 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 dun. Man, we got a great podcast here for you today. Talking to some good friends. They both have the same name. It's crazy. Yeah, we'll talk about that here in a second. We are here with the Barnes family, with Woo. Samuel Barnes and his son, young Samuel. Woo. I know them. From Remnant Family Ministries. And we are excited to have them on the podcast today. We'll get to our guest in just a moment. But Landon, talk to me a little bit about what the Lord's been teaching you recently in your life. What's been going on, bud? Well, today I'm going to be very transparent mm. in what I'm doing. I talked to this with you about this a little bit. And just a little bit of context, my past struggles and something that the Lord's freed me from, taking off all the bondage from, yes. is I was deep into pornography. I got exposed to that at a very young age. I got exposed mm. to that. And what I want to talk about is the Lord is trying to get through to me and he's trying to use me in ways and give me opportunities. And since he's been trying to do that, the enemy has tempted me with things I have not been tempted with in months, the mm. year, like, very, very long time I've not even been tempted with. And he's trying to bring that up for multiple reasons. He's trying to bring that up to show me that this is what you've done. Why can you do anything other than that? Even trying to get me with that with scripture saying, <laughs> David was a man of war. He couldn't build the temple of God. Like, why do you think you can even preach the word of God if you struggle with this? Like the thing, the things that you've done, why can, why would the Lord use you to do those things? So the doubt it's been placing in my life. And he's also been using it to say, you can't do that. If you still struggle with it, you have a thorn in your own eye, like trying to use me in that way mm. to not make me do what the Lord has called me to do. And I just wanted to share that with battling that, <clears throat> it's it's all taking authority over your own life. Yes, that is so true. You have to be the one to pick up your cross and crucify your own flesh. And the reason that that is so hard to do is because Jesus Christ crucified. He was crucified on the cross. Yes. And that was the most painful death in history. Yeah. He was beaten. He was bloody. He was hung on that cross to die for me because the Father wanted to spend time with me. It, you have nothing to do to earn the Father's love. It doesn't matter what you've done. He loves you so much more than you can imagine. Yes, he does. So what I just want to say with that, I don't mean to take up so much time. Oh, but you're fine, bud. Yeah. I just wanted to say that you have to take authority in every single thought captive or those thoughts will rule your, rule your whole life. Yep, you, can't, will. you cannot live in fear or doubt by that. Yeah, now, absolutely. Yeah, so sorry for my little rant. I just oh, want no, to say no, that's take very authority. helpful. You take authority, bro. You're doing great. I'm proud yes. of you. Yeah. Now, on a sidetrack, I want to ask how the Freedom Network is doing. Tell Man, me how they're doing. Yes, Freedom Network is great. Our hubs are growing across the country. I'm so excited about all of our hubs. One of our hubs, though, all the way up in Muskegon, Michigan. We'll actually be there in a couple of weeks, not too Ooh. long from now. Yeah, up with Daniel Reem and his dear family up there. Um, they are actually getting a building that they're going to be meeting in. No way. Yeah, so me and you are going to be traveling up to Michigan, and we're going to be there for the dedication service of that hub for that building. And that is just going to be phenomenal. So if you are in Michigan, we have several hubs in Michigan, but if you're close to Muskegon, uh, you can maybe join the hub there. Uh, but, hey, to look at all of our hubs and see what the Lord's doing across the country, you can go to GV freedomnetwork.com. Again, that is gvfreedomnetwork.com. God is just miraculously, look, we're seeing souls saved every week in mm -hmm. our hubs. We're seeing baptisms in our in our hubs every week. We're seeing Praise deliverances. God. We're seeing healings. Man, God is just doing so much, and I'm so humbled, so humbled just to have a very, very, very small uh, part in that, and uh, God is just so good. But, so yeah, anyway, the Freedom Network, Global Vision Hubs, everything's going great. We're continuing to grow, thrive, and just asking the Lord for more. What can we do more as we continue in this journey for the glory of God? So I am definitely excited about all that the Lord is doing. But hey, I'm really excited, Landon. For what? I'm really excited about the guest we have today. <sighs> Me too. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really excited about this one particular guest that's in the podcast studio right now yep. who happens to be 10 years old. He's pretty cool. It, yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. He convicted me a while ago with something he said. It's, anyway, it's phenomenal. Ooh. Yeah, he's a little preacher prophet over there. Talk about that later. Prophet in training. You're the pit. Oh, well, that sounded wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're not in a pit, son. You're in a pit of... 
prophet in training. Okay, yeah, so God <laughs> prophet is in training. <laughs> prophet in training. God is working. So we're going to be introduced to young Samuel here in a moment, and we also obviously are going to be talking to Dad, who his name is Samuel Barnes, and they recently started. Um, Remnant Family Ministries, where they travel across the country. They go to various crusades, home churches, other things that the Lord Holy Spirit leads them to, share their testimony. And we're going to hear that testimony today. And I believe, folks, today your life is going to be encouraged, and it's going to be changed for the glory of God after hearing what the Lord has done in this family. Because what the Lord has done in my family, what the Lord has done in my dear friend's family and the Barnes family, the same He can do for you. The same freedom that this family has experienced in Christ is the same freedom that the Lord wants to bring to you in the name of Jesus. So we're going to talk about that. So without any further ado, I want to welcome my dear friends to the podcast today. What's up, young Samuel? How are you today, buddy? I am good. How are how are you? I'm doing great now that I've been talking to you today. That's been great, man. How are you, are you doing well? You, yes, sir. How's the ministry yes, going? It's going amazing. Awesome. Yeah, we're we love to travel now, and what we like is we can, we're not only traveling for fun, we're just traveling to share the gospel. Yeah. You know, because we're doing it for the Lord, and the Lord is blessing us. Absolutely, that's great. And that's what's fun about it. Oh, that's awesome, man. What is something that the Lord's been teaching you lately? What is something He's been working on you about? Well, so, I've really been so I've started reading my Bible a lot, a lot more lately. Every morning I've been reading the Gospels. So love it. I've been reading about how Jesus performed his miracles, right? Uh-huh. And so I, I keep reading and I keep reading, and I'm like, God, I want to see more of this, mm-hmm. right? And so as we've been praying that, we have seen God do more of that. He's doing more miracles, signs, and wonders. And, like, sometimes during church, mm-hmm. like, during the worship, I'll just get a prophetic word, and I'll be able to share that. But I do not do it for myself. I do it for God. Because mm-hmm. if it's for me, it doesn't do anything for the kingdom. Preach. Come on. All it shows is that I have a holier-than-thou attitude, mm. right? But what we need to have is a God, you are the Holy One attitude. We need to be a mirror reflecting right to Him. Come on, mm, that's good. <laughs> Come on, young Samuel. So, <laughs> man, that's incredible. I love that. Dad, man, you have a t- <laughs> <laughs> 10 year old son over here out preaching all of us in the room today. Yeah. Uh, so, Samuel, let's start with you, Samuel Sr., uh, Mr. Samuel uh, Barnes with Remnant Family Ministries. T- share a little bit about your testimony. What has the Lord been doing in your life over the past few years and how has it been affecting your family? And then I'm going to come back to you, young Samuel, and ask you a similar question. What is something that the Lord is teaching you through dad? And we're going to get to there in just a few minutes. So Mr. Samuel, tell us a little bit, my brother, about Remnant Family Ministries and just go into your testimony and share whatever the Holy Spirit wants you to share today. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us here, and uh, thanks for this opportunity to uh, to boast about the Lord, right? To make Him famous, to build His kingdom, to glorify Him, and hopefully to bring some some hope and some encouragement to other families. You know, our desire as RFM is is that when other people hear our testimony, that they see something in them that is similar to us. Um, and just know that if God can change our life, if God can change our family, He can change their family. And so we just pray that all other things would uh, fade out and that Jesus would be turned up, right? So, um, so yeah, I just want to thank you for having us to, to share all that. So uh, Remnant Family Ministries, um, I guess I'll just back up. Um, so I was raised, uh, I was raised Catholic. I was raised, you know, just real religious. And uh, I would go to church on Christmas and Easter. So I called, I guess we were Christers. And um, my parents got divorced at a very young age. Uh, I was seven years old. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic, and uh, I just have one other sibling. And when my parents got divorced, uh, we, um, you know, had extended families and step parents, and there was a lot of uh, instability. We had a lot of different times that we moved. We moved around to a lot of different schools. I never really felt like I, I fit in. I got bullied a lot. As a matter of fact, I moved in 18 different homes by the time I was 18 years of age. And so, uh, so uh, after, after I graduated high school, I went into the Marine Corps. And, 
had a really bad injury to my lower back and, and was forced to take an honorable medical discharge. Um, and at this point, from zero to 20, um, I didn't know the Lord. Um, I would go to church on holidays. And um, and when I was 21, uh, somebody actually shared the gospel with me and said, you know, do you want to accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior? Do you want to be forgiven of all your sins? And uh, I clearly knew what my sins were. Like I knew that I was involved in, you know, drugs or alcohol or uh, uh, premarital sex, and you know, had a had a had a mouth on me like a sailor. And so, um, I knew that I was broken. I knew that I was hurt. I knew that um, I had all these wounds in my heart. I didn't know what they were called. But when somebody presented the gospel to me and said, Jesus loves you, Jesus wants to graft you into his family, Jesus wants to um, adopt you, um, and I clearly knew that I wanted that. And so at 21 years of age, um, I became a born-again believer and just started reading the Bible and immediately felt the love of the Father. And I felt um, uh, significant in Christ and and I share that because I, um, even though that some of the, the, the wounds that I had from being a child of, of divorce or a child of an alcoholic or a child growing up with not a lot of stability, um, matter of fact, my mom and my stepfather were involved in new age religion, uh, meditation, third eye, um, yoga. And so there was a lot of uh, dream catchers and crystals. And so... Um, I was raised uh, in witchcraft and a lot of uh, things of that nature. And so when I accepted Christ, um, the love of the Father filled me, but I didn't know how to live free. And so for the next you know, 25 years, I went through many broken engagements, many broken relationships, uh, addictions to many substances, pornography, uh, premarital sex. And even though I loved Jesus and was following Jesus, um, I was still really broken. I went through recovery programs. I went through all these classes, took all these different medications for depression or, you know, had all these suicidal tendencies and um, tried to keep shaking the chains free, but I couldn't. And I want to share that because... Um, what has happened in the last two years of our life was so significant that I just want to share with people um, what I was struggling with, even as a Christ follower or even as a Christian. And so uh, about two years ago, uh, I started having a bunch of physical symptoms happening in my body. And so I went to the doctor and they did an MRI and I had another MRI and they said that I had uh, brain cancer. They said I had a tumor on my frontal lobe. So how old were you at um, the time? So I was 50. I'm 51 now. 51. So we're talking about recently. Yeah, this was just, uh, um, I guess February will be two years. So I guess it was 49. Yeah, I was 49 yeah. when I had the first uh, scan. And then I, would, I had just turned 50 mm-hmm. when I was diagnosed. So they diagnosed you with what again? So it's called a grade two glioma. It's brain cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, and... My dad died of cancer, my aunt died of cancer, my uncle died of cancer, my grandma died of cancer, and my great-great-grandmother died of cancer, all on my dad's side. Wow. So there was a generational curse of cancer in my family, and I didn't know that there were such things as generational curses of cancer or generational curses of spirits of infirmity. Um, I I could clearly see that there was curses of addiction in my family. Um, but I didn't understand all that from a spiritual side. I just saw it from a physical side. Wow. So I was diagnosed with, um, with brain cancer and the, you know, the surgeon said, we can't really do anything until it gets so big that we can then go in and try to cut it out. But there's a, you know, a fine line between leaving it or, you know, cutting it out. So we're just going to just watch it. So, um, so when that happened, when I got diagnosed with brain cancer, I started spiraling and I had been sober, uh, from alcohol for, uh, four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because I had gone through a recovery program and, uh, so I wasn't drinking alcohol, but when the diagnosis came in, I was grabbing for answers. I was grabbing for comfort. I was grabbing for something to medicate the pain of knowing I'm going to die soon. I have four kids. I have a younger wife 
and uh, I'm going to die of the same thing that took my dad out. So I started drinking again. I couldn't control the alcohol. The depression set in. The heaviness set in. The suicidal tendencies came back. And so I was literally spiraling. I was drinking and driving, which I had never done. I was drinking at work, which I had never done. And, um, you know, my wife shares this part of this testimony is she would pray every night that she would wake up first because the darkness and the evil and the addiction and the suicidal tendencies that were controlling me, she was like, Lord, just let me wake up first because I want to be the first one to find my husband if he mm-hmm. kills himself. And so I'd be out drinking in my shop or drinking in the yard. or, And so it was just really bad. That is crazy. But the Lord, something shifted, obviously, in your life. Tell me about how the Lord started working there. You had a miracle that took place, and I want you to, I don't want to steal your thunder, I want you to share that as well. But mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about what the transition was. What made the difference? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, or so, should I say, who made the difference? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so my sister had Samuel, there's a, there's a, we live in Northwest Arkansas and my sister said, Samuel, there's a church in Tennessee and they actually do prayers for people to get healed by the blood of Jesus. And then they do prayers for people to be delivered from evil spirits that are controlling them. And I had never heard of deliverance, but I heard a healing and I was like, I told my sister, I said, well, I don't know what deliverance is. And she gave you know, told me some information. I read a couple quick books, but she just said, there's a conference in two weeks Samuel, you need to get there and get prayed for for healing. So I literally loaded up our family of six. We, you know, drove nine hours to this church in Tennessee, and it wasn't the church. It wasn't the guy on stage. It was it was Jesus Christ. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. But what happened was, um, I received prayers for physical healing, and also received prayers from uh, uh, prayers of deliverance, where these evil spirits that were controlling me, like I couldn't control the alcohol. I couldn't control the depression. I couldn't control the voices in my head. I couldn't control the spirits of suicide or the suicidal tendencies. Um, And so what happened in that moment, um, actually it was, it was like an hour and a half or two hours where I was being delivered from these evil spirits that were tormenting me, were coming out of me. And then people were laying hands on me and anointed me with oil and prayed for generational curses of cancer to be broken and generational curses of spirits of infirmity to be broken. Mm -hmm. And so after um, being on the floor for all that time, I stood up and I saw, I I just stood up and I just yelled at the top of my lungs, I'm free, I'm free, because (laughs) I immediately felt the tormenting spirits come out of me. And so when I stood up like, I was, I was empty, but full of peace. I had this joy in me that I have never experienced ever. And so this was September 5th, uh, 2022. And so matter of fact, I was also delivered from the spirit of uh, small places or claustrophobia. Mm. And so literally that night we went back to our hotel room and all our kids were like, daddy, you're getting in the elevator to go up. <laughs> like literally that was, that was one of the most instantaneous fruits of the deliverance that my family got to see is daddy, daddy just went into an elevator and I'd been claustrophobic since I was six, I was locked in a dryer. And so that, that, that'll, that'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> that'll do it. So, uh, so September 5th, I received prayers for healing and deliverance and, um, addiction to tobacco literally left me addiction to alcohol left me, uh, depression, suicidal tendencies left me. Uh, and my next MRI wasn't for another four months. And so believing that we were healed, um, and seeing all the things that God had done spiritually through deliverance. Um, my next MRI was, uh, January 3rd and then January 6th, we went to the neurosurgeon at UAMS and he pulled up all the scans over the last year. And he told my wife that your brain tumor is gone. (laughs) Healed. Praise God. That's awesome. Gone. Awesome. So let me just get this straight and recap. So your life has changed. You hear about this church, by the way, I think it was Global Vision Bible Church. Yes. And that God used for this in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. You come to Tennessee, you come to one of the deliverance services. Not only did you get spiritually set free from so much, but the Lord touched that brain tumor and dissolved it. Yes. Mm, and it went away and you have a medical verifiable report yeah. that you are yeah. completely yeah. cancer 
tumor free. Isn't yeah. that incredible? It's incredible Man. because like the, the gospel I thought was just the message of salvation. And what I've learned is that it's salvation and it's healing and deliverance and that Jesus Christ did all of these things when he was here. And so I felt like I was I was only living a third of what Jesus's ministry was. And so now we've seen the full gospel manifest through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And mm. my four kids saw the finger of God, the power of God, heal daddy from depression and addiction and physically yeah, Take, in an instant. That's that's amazing. Take mm. me back to that moment in the hospital. The doctor has these scans pulled up. Mm -hmm. Tells you that you're completely free of a brain tumor mm -hmm. and brain cancer that undoubtedly could have easily taken you from this world, right? Take me back to that emotion and that feeling of hearing the words come out of that doctor's mouth. You are cancer free. What, what, how did you feel like what just talk about that for a moment so it was really interesting because um so Lindsay and i were sitting we our appointment was early and we got there and then we were brought to the to the room where we we're going to see the doctor and we were sitting in that room for i don't know like an hour and a half it was a yeah. long time and what had happened is the neurosurgeon was literally pulling up every scan from the last 11 months from when they first saw it to the next one to the next one to the last one he was literally looking at everything. So when the doctor was ready for us, they moved us into another room with the surgeon. And so he said, he's like, Samuel, he's like, your brain cancer, the tumor is gone. And he took his little pencil. He's like, here's your gray matter. Here's your white matter. Here's what it was. So Lindsay and I are just like looking at the screen at the <laughs> scans and we're just looking at the doctor. And Lindsay will tell you, she's like, she asked the doctor, she said, how does that happen? How does that just disappear? Right. Because like in the moment we were like we were believing I was healed, but we're like, well, where did it go? Yeah. And the doctor looked at us and he says, do you do you believe in or do you know Jesus or do you believe in Jesus? And so he was a believer and he said, do you know Jesus? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, well, that's how this happens. Wow. Like it was amazing. <laughs> so cool. Lindsay awesome. will tell you the exact word that he said because I, I think we were like deer in headlights, and so we were so numb but elated, and, and we walk out of there, and we're just like, "I'm not gonna die. I don't have cancer anymore. I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna be like my dad and That's my awesome. aunt and my right, like the generational curse." You coming shall after live you. and shall not. You die. shall live and not die. <laughs> that is beautiful. Amen. So you leave the hospital. You're yeah. celebrating the goodness of God. Yep. But the Lord's not done in your life. Nope. He saves you. He delivers you. He heals you. Yeah. And then he <laughs> then he called you. And, and so it's like you experienced a whole season of a whole life in a matter of months. It's, it's just phenomenal. And then he calls you and says, Samuel, I want to use you and your family to minister and to share the gospel, the good news of Christ, and to share your testimony across the country, making a positive impact in different and hundreds, if not thousands of lives, and no doubt will do that and continue to do that. Talk to me about how he birthed the Remnant Family Ministries. What does that include? And talk to us a little bit about that ministry. Yeah, so... After, you know, the finger of God touched me, the priest of the home, right? I'm married. We have four kids. We have a 10-year-old. We have twin eight-year-old boys, and we have a four-year-old. After he touched me, and they witnessed the power of God, he then touched my wife, delivered her from the spirit of religion, delivered her from addiction, from vaping. Matter of fact, when she tells her testimony, she was in the war room praying, and she'll say, I never could take my vape into the war room with me. I always had to leave it out was interesting, right? And But then God delivered her from vaping, from, you know, nicotine. So God touched me, God touched my wife, and the Holy Spirit started to just pour himself over our family. And after we had gotten, after I'd gotten delivered, we came home and cleaned our house out of all the witchcraft, all the pagan idols, all the mixture, all the things that were preventing the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, from being welcome in our house, from resting in our house. So young Samuel's room was decorated in Harry Potter. We had all the Twilight books. We had all the movies. We had all the everything. And so what happened is our family went through revival. 
our hearts went through revival. Revival started around our dinner table, and all four of our kids started to be transformed, even from the ages of four to ten. And so we started filling our house with worship music, filling our house with prayer, filling our house with fasting. We started to learn about what it means to um, die to ourself and to you know carry our cross and and follow Him. And so. We had a word of the month last year, and it was stewardship. It was obedience. It was humility. It was holiness, right? And so every month, our whole family around the dinner table would look at that word, study the word, act on the word, live out the word. So revival started breaking out in our family. And in that time, the Lord was talking to to me and to Lindsay and I and just saying, I now have a vision for you guys. I have an assignment. I have a calling. I didn't just heal you for you. I didn't just, I didn't just, um, you know, cause this revival in your family just so you could go back to work and go on your ways and keep building your kingdom and your bank account. I did this so you can be used to be, you know, a vessel to touch other people. And so, last May and June, he gave us this vision of remnant family ministry to where we would go testify, we would encourage, we would bring hope to families, to husbands, to wives, so that way marriages can be restored and reconciled. Because that's a whole other part of this, Pastor Austin. My wife and I, we've been married 13 years, but it's been a very difficult marriage until God saved, healed, and delivered us and brought us in unity in the Holy Spirit. And so he saved our marriage. By all accounts, we still we should not have been married still with the addiction, with the pornography, with the anger issues, with the, the controlling issues, with the everything. So we want to share with other people that their marriage can be restored, can be renewed, can be reconciled, and can be on fire. And that and then that parents can be raising their kids in an environment and an atmosphere that glorifies God, that instills godly character and quality qualities, and then it affects your your neighborhoods and your work and your your city and everything. And so, so that's the vision God gave us: is to travel, to testify, and then the and last thing, the other thing is, um, the Holy Spirit has been pouring out His gifts on our whole family. And I'm humbled to say that he's been using our hands as a conduit to see people get saved, healed, and delivered. And so we minister deliverance now every week. We've gone through training. We teach deliverance classes. And so we can't unsee what we've seen. We can't undo it. And so by the finger of God, we want to be a part of setting people free, causing a spark of revival in marriages and in families all across this country. I think that is absolutely uh, beautiful. And I was just sitting here thinking, going back to the doctor telling you pretty much you were healed. When when God heals, he doesn't heal halfway. And when he spoke healing over you, that one spoken word of healing from the lips of our Lord that fell over that brain also encompassed your whole life, your marriage your family, and today he continues to say, Samuel, you are healed. And that is powerful, that we all are offered that same healing spiritually and then also physically. And it's just it's just amazing what the Lord has done in your life. And I want to kind of pivot a little bit to young Samuel over here, who is also in the studio. And so tell me a little bit about this, my friend. I mean, dad gets changed. I mean, the whole man's life just changes in an instant. Mom and dad are doing better. Dad's in the word now. And now dad comes to you and says something like, all right, bud, uh, Harry Potter's going to have to go, man. I want to, I, I don't be spiritualized on me right now. I, I, I want to really know the first time you heard that, that, Harry Potter's going to have to go and the other things, whatever you had that you liked had to go or, or or thought it was connected to some type of magic or, or witchcraft and dad wants it out of the house. How in the world did you feel at first? Just talk to me about that. So, yeah, I mean, at first I was like, these are the things I love. These are the things I want. Cause like I, 
what uh, for a row of nights one time we were watching the Harry Potter movies and I loved it. It was my favorite thing. So like I was in whenever this happened, I was in the middle of the one that I've been wanting to watch for a long time. Okay. <laughs> and then I was like, I can't finish it. I was like, I can't. <laughs> I, I was like, what is going on? Like, I know God has changed y'all, but like, what? Why do I have to give up this? If it's gonna be this much, why do I have to? And then, mm. like, they ha- they had to explain it, right? And sure. so, I was like, "Well, okay, uh, yeah. your word goes." I mean, uh, yeah, absolutely. What are you gonna do, right? You're the child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, tell me a little so, bit, though, young Samuel, about what the Lord has done in your life. Now, obviously you see dad and mom change. Mm -hmm. How did the Lord change young Samuel? You know, so like whenever it started with um, mom and dad, I was like, this is cool. Well, whenever it started with dad, right? So he was Mm -hmm. up for two hours getting the deliverance. And then our Aunt Tracy, okay, she was sitting in the back near us. And she's the most soft-spoken, tender-hearted, nice Ten, she's just very, very nice, right? It, just soft, and she's, and, and so she was. So we were sitting there, and then we heard a scream. Okay, and so I looked over at my aunt Tracy. It was her. Okay, and so we saw her full on manifesting, right? And that's the moment it became real for the rest of the family, because it was already real for Dad, because he was going through it. But it became real for me and my siblings and my mom. It became real to see this isn't just fake. It's not a playground, you know, because you can look at all these other people and be like, they're just playing, right? But whenever that happened, then we went home. And then after mom and dad explained the Harry Potter thing, when we were throwing stuff out, I... It was changing me. We were like, in the name of Jesus, we threw it out near our front door. We had a big, big pile. Because I had whole magic kits, the all-seeing eye. I had Harry Potter. I had all all the stuff. All the stuff. All the Avengers. Like, everything. And so, when we did that, we were just like, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We were just putting it all in a pile. And then we were going through my room, and then I I made a little quilt. So it was for my stuffed animal, we, and I loved it. And then I and then my mom flipped it over, and she's like, "Hey Sam, the back of this is Harry Potter." I was so sad, but I knew that it would just free me up. I knew that whenever that left, the Holy Spirit would come in, right? So I had to burn that. It was so so hard. But even though it's hard, it's been worth it. It's been worth it because what happened is we burned all that stuff, right? So then the Holy Spirit comes in. But we made enough room, right? I mean, we're still finding things today that were thrown out, you know? Mm. Like, it's not just a one and done thing, right? Sure. It's, it's, you still got to engage in it, right? Because you can't just throw these stuff out and then. Just kind of let little bits back in, but you still got to keep continuously throwing it out and watch what, like, you buy or you get or, you know, because, like, the other few days ago, or, and then we we just found a little toy, right? A little oh. innocent toy. Not innocent. <laughs> you know, it's like, throw it out. Yeah. Because... It doesn't matter what it is. It's like it once you um, be obedient to the Holy Spirit, then He can heal you. Then He can de- deliver you. Then He can save you. Yeah. So p- some people listening uh, to this podcast now are probably thinking, "Wow, it's like y'all are kind of taking things a little too far." I mean, you, you have to get rid of, or you need to get rid of. Harry Potter memorabilia, you have to change this, you have to change that. Like, some people are definitely feeling right now that, eh, that's not really necessary. Big Samuel, (laughs) Dad, uh, 
what do you say to that person lovingly who just thinks that what we're talking about at this point? You know, healing from cancer is cool, right? Uh, putting your marriage back together is cool. Um, all this stuff is just great. And now we've gotten to this point of now we're throwing away children's books. Lovingly explain to them why that's important, my friend. So He's I think muted. One, so I think one of the things that we that we realized in going through deliverance um, in a more tangible way than ever is that evil is real and that we have an enemy and that that enemy has strategies, blueprints, and assignments to come steal, kill, and destroy our lives. And I don't know how I can over-communicate the significance of the depression and the suicidal tendencies that I've had ever since I was a kid and the amount of addiction uh, or inability to control any addictions in my life. And then when Jesus healed me of those and delivered me from the evil spirits tormenting me, uh, it was so significant that I knew it was nothing that any man or I could ever do because I had tried for 50 years. And so in learning that uh, Jesus delivers me from my enemies and not my friends, I had to make the things that were controlling me my enemies. I had to make, uh, and then I also learned that evil spirits have to be invited into my life, and I have to open a doorway to give up spiritual real estate in my heart. And so those evil spirits look like, you know, drugs or alcohol or pornography or um, other idols or other things that um, uh, allow in other evil spirits. And so when I got to see what the Holy Spirit did in me, I wanted nothing to do with any other spirit, just the Holy Spirit. And so I uh, cleaned out everything that wasn't holy, false idols, pagan idols, anything that's mixture, like, well, I'm going to go to church. Listen, Jesus didn't die for us to go to church on Sunday and Wednesday, right? He didn't die for us just so I could give 10%, right? He died for us because he loves us so we can live. Religion says Jesus died for us, so, oh, gee, I guess I'll follow you out of guilt. No, that's religion. Jesus said, I died for you because I love you. I died for you so you can live, right? And I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be hot, right? So yes, it may seem radical. It may seem extreme, but I'm, I'm going to flip over tables until the trumpet blows, right? Because that's what came in. That's what Jesus came to do. So it may seem radical. It may seem extreme, but he not only saved me, but he healed me and he delivered me. And I had an encounter with God and I've never been to seminary and I don't know Greek and Hebrew, but the, but the finger of God literally touched me and I can't, the only thing I want to do is follow him. The only thing I want to do is please him. The only thing I want to do is bring glory to him. And by watching, you know, stuff on Netflix and murder shows and 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 and, and standing up at a, at a at a football game more than I stand up at church doesn't glorify him. And so it is extreme. It is radical. But it's radical that that Jesus died on a cross for me. That's radical. Absolutely. And it's radical that he healed you. And it's radical that he put your family back together. And it's radical that he called you into ministry. And it's radical that you have a 10-year-old son over there who who is just phenomenal and, and growing in his relationship with the Lord. Therefore, when we have a radical God who saves us and a radical God who heals us and a radical God who delivers us, it leads us to live a life that is radical for the glory of God. Amen. Amen to that. Samuel, tell me a little bit, young Samuel, tell me a little bit about, so dad goes through all these changes and things like that. How did that affect you as a, as a, at the time, a nine-year-old boy at the time or eight-year-old mm-hmm. boy? How, how did seeing dad change and what God did in dad's life, how did that affect you? Yeah, so um, whenever it started, like, I was not sure if I was all in for it, but I was kind of like wanting to dip my toe in the water before I totally jumped in, right? You know? (laughs) Sure, yeah. So, so like, um, well, okay, I talked away. (laughs) So, um, what happened was I started to get into, like, get into what's going on, right? And so, um, like, before I wasn't on fire, right? 
you know? Mm. But, like, and I started having a relationship with God. So, um, like, here at the Deliverance Conference, Jenny Weaver used the example of if she didn't talk to her husband until only Sunday, right? That'd be walking th- through the house. Oh, it's not, not Sunday yet. It's not Sunday yet, right? You wouldn't have any relationship. Yes. I That was how I was with God. Come on. It was only Sundays or meals, right? Because you pray at your meal, check yeah. that box, go to church, maybe do a Wednesday Bible study, like, you know, but it's not like you just can't, you don't do just that and have an amazing relationship with God, right? Mm. So I had to start praying. And I remember when our Nana lived at our house, um, we went to her camper some nights and we slept there and she, and she always, we always prayed before bed. We never did that in our house. Never, mm. never. Cause there wasn't time for it. Right. We sure. did, but we didn't just make time. That's yeah. the deal. Cause there's always time. Yeah. It, there's 24 hours in a day. Everybody has 24 hours. If somebody can do it, we can do it, right? Sure, absolutely. If you can spend hours on a video game, if you can spend hours just chilling and watching Netflix, why don't you spend those hours reading your Bible? Why don't you spend those hours praying? Why mm. don't you spend those hours getting to know God more, right? Sure. So I started having to do that. I didn't just see it and go, that's cool, and then move on, right? Because... After I made the change of throwing everything out, then I had to put the action plan, right? And so, yeah. um, so I, it wasn't just dad. You didn't do this just because of dad did this. You do, you feel like you were making these changes because the Lord was actually starting to deal with young Samuel, right? Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. Awesome. And so, like, um, I went through, like, many deliverances. So we made a war room. And then I just had, like, some little deliverances here and there whenever I was struggling. But then one night, um, it, we were being attacked hard mm. that night because our nana and mom were coming back from a women's retreat. Actually, that women's retreat. retreat. So in 2017, the Lord started to work on my mom there, okay? Mm-hmm. And then come 2023 or 2022, 2022, okay, yeah, 22, um... Then God worked on dad because dad, God knew that dad would have just jumped right in, mm. but the Lord knew that mom would have taken a little bit longer mm. and it's how the Lord has built our mom, right? Because yeah. the Lord builds people in different ways, Absolutely, you know? Yeah. yeah. So God started working on our mom and then he worked on dad and then it was a family revival. Wow. It went in with the whole family, right? Mm. So... And then, so that night from the women's retreat, they came home. And then, um, so I was being attacked really hard that night. I was just scared and having a hard time. I was, and um, so I couldn't fall asleep. I just felt insecure, not safe. And we're in our house. We we have a little farm. We're out in the country, so there's nothing going to happen, you know? And so I, I woke up my dad and I was like, Dad, there's something wrong. We need to take care of this. I'm not feeling safe. And mm-hmm. like, I laid down, I prayed, and I prayed. I could not put my head to the pillow. I was setting up just like this. I mean, I was in the bed. I was doing this. I mean, like. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. Just crazy fear, huh? But then, um, so at one point, I just went up to my dad again. I said, we need to take care of this now. It's important. And so mm-hmm. he was like. Okay, let me get my Bible. And I started like stuttering, shaking. Like it was, I was manifesting. Yeah. Dad was going, we were going upstairs to get my dad's Bible. And I was like, "Uh, uh." that's crazy. And and so, like, we went to our war room. So we have a spot under our stairs. And so we just sat in there. And so we went in there. We went through um, most of the Greg Locke's, uh, Greg Locke deliverance manual. Yeah. Like all that applied to me. And so. We did that. I mean, at most points, I hardly remember most of it, but I remember some parts, and I was just full on manifesting, right? And But when you're manifesting, it's not you. Yeah. You know, it's like it's through your body, but it's not you. It's the evil spirit inside of you, right? Absolutely, yeah. Because, like, when, what I've thought of, and I, I, I'm, whenever I do some deliverance, I, tr- I say, 
to myself and to other people a lot. If you need to do whatever, you know, it, it, when you're manifesting, it's not you. Nobody's going to think bad about you. It's yeah. the evil spirit inside of you. Yeah. And a lot of things, um, I don't know if any kids are going to watch this, but if they do, I want them to know that these evil spirits inside of them are most not likely not caused by them. They're caused by their parents' generation. Not to shame the parents. Sure. But, I mean, it could be generational curses. It could be just, it could be different things. And when you're getting deliverance, it takes humility, mm -hmm. right? And it takes forgiveness. It takes repentance. And you got to let go of the things, right? Because you can't hold on to something so, so tight. It's an open hand, right? God can place things and God can take away things. But mm -hmm. if you're holding on to something, you can't move to the other place that God wants you to go. Come on, preacher right? man. Yeah. So Come on. when you're holding on to something, you can't be the de delivered where God wants you to be. Yeah. If you're holding on to where you live, you can't go to where God wants you to preach, right? Yeah. We have to let go of the things and have an open hand. That way God can move. Because if God can't move, there's no point of us being here. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. So when you, you know, you're 10 years old, Lord willing, hopefully you have a lot of life ahead of you. What? Um, and that lot of life. Let me just go ahead and tell you, my dear friend, God called me to preach when I was 12. And I can tell you that life and you always hear adults. I mean, adults used to say this all the time. Oh, this is going to go by so fast, you know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Today felt like it was like 5,000 hours. Yeah. And then I woke up one morning and I was 38 years old. And I'm like, <laughs> what? The world? Yeah. Where did life go? I was just called to preach when I was 12. So hopefully you have a long, healthy life in front of you. But what do you feel like the Lord might have you do, young Samuel? So um, I've received a lot of prophetic words from some of our friends at our church. And like, so... I've been prophesied to have a pastoral anointing, a mm. preaching a prophetic. I feel that. <laughs> like, there's a lot of Strong. things that, that I could go yeah. go in depth with, but don't want to go through that little rabbit hole. Yeah, but so, yeah, um, but like that. So, um, whenever we were looking for a church, I was like, I just want to start a church here at our land. You know, I was there like, you go. I'll I'll be the main preacher. I'll be the main <laughs> preacher. You know, I, I was ready. So I started preaching whenever I was like nine. Mm. So I went out to the recovery center where my grandparents work, my nana and papa. And so, yeah. um, I went out there and I started putting together little sermons. So I started preaching for fifteen minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes, just kind of in there. And so. I started doing that, and then um, I started to read scriptures and um, read different things at our church. And so then I started giving prophetic words, and then the Lord has started to grow me in that, right? Mm, it's so beautiful. I don't know where God's going to take me or what he's going to have me do, but it's just open hand, right? Yeah, just and be so, faithful, man. Just keep on moving forward. So he, I asked this of all of our guests, but I'm gonna, I've am gonna i never asked a 10-year-old this question, so I'm going to ask a 10-year-old. I'm not going to ask Dad today. I'm go, this question is going to you. Here it is. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. There are people, there are adults three, four, five, six times your age that are listening to this podcast today who are discouraged. Maybe they faced a lot of lie, a, a lot of loss. Maybe they've been through divorce. Maybe they've had a lot of trauma that they've experienced. What does a 10-year-old boy, what wisdom mm. do you have today, Samuel, to offer hope to these hurting people? Yeah. I've never actually thought about that. <laughs> Come on. You got it. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, so what I would say is if single or married or whatever, right, you know, what God has for you is more than you think. Uh -huh. Okay? So what I what I say is if you can think of what God can do, he's going to do more than you think. Come on. You know? Yeah. So just keep believing and God will show you, right? Cuz mm. like for dad, he didn't want to die of cancer, right? Cuz he had four kids and a younger wife, right? Yeah. But he still had the evil spirits controlling him, right? Your hope isn't the things that you hold on to. So I'm not saying to hold on to something. I'm saying keep the open hand, 
uh-huh. but still say I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best for you. I now we want to do it for God, not for well, hmm, not for the people, right? Yeah. But what we want to do is do it. <laughs> for God, and then we can boast about God. Uh-huh. We can say, guys, guys, look at what God did. Look at what God did through me. Look how, how he is glorifying himself through a vessel, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. Cause, so, do um, you, so do you believe, not trying to interrupt you, just keep, keep mm-hmm. conversation going here. So do you feel like those who are hurting, who are watching today, who are listening today, do you believe that the same God that healed and helped Daddy can heal and help and encourage them? 100%. 100%. 100%. More like a thousand. I mean, <laughs> of course. Yeah, right? there's no junior Holy Spirit. There's no higher ranking Holy Spirit, Come right? On. It's only one, right? <laughs> yeah. Only yeah, the good. one. So, and right now, somebody watching may be in a um, Abraham and Isaac moment, right? Sure. You may be about to sacrifice something so big, but God's going to send you a goat. He's <laughs> going to send you something small, right? Uh huh. Because what God can do for the people in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Like what He did in the Gospels, He can do for you too. Mm. It's just a matter of your surrender. Surrender. Mm. If God's not moving in your your life, you probably have something that you need to surrender, Mm -hmm. right? That's wisdom right there. Because, or repent of. And like, you need to ask some people for forgiveness, maybe. You know, there are there's some things, right? Yeah. So, um when I so what I would say is just for for like God to move, you just need to repent and surrender to him, right? Mm, yeah. When so one That's night good. we were at some of our friends' house and mm-hmm. I got the word surrender. Right, so I shared that, and then one of the ladies at our church said that word was for me. Mm. I needed to surrender, and God needs His people to surrender. Right? That's great. That's beautiful. Mm. So if you're out there, you're hurting, you have a lot of issues going on. It could be a reminder from the Holy Spirit. Give it to Him. Cast your burdens. First Peter chapter five verse seven. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. Because he cares for you. He loves you. Surrender it to him. Cast it to him. Give it to him. And watch God move. Wow. What wisdom have we gotten today from dad, Samuel, Samuel Barnes, but also his son, Samuel. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing what the Lord has done, not just in you, my friend, and not just in your wife, Lindsay, and in your home, but what he is continuing to do in your children. I think What's going to bless you more than anything that God's done in your life is going to see what he does in your children and through your children and the impact, yes, that you're going to make for the glory of God. But what God has done in you is going to be doubled and tripled and quadrupled through the life of your children that will live a forever, leave a forever legacy for the glory of the Lord. And that's what it's about, my friend. Amen. Like, um, being made whole, right? Mm. God can physically heal people. God can deliver people. But what our family has experienced is being made whole. He has provided order to the chaos. He has provided a foundation to our shifting sand, right? There was generational curses of divorce. You know, I was the, my sister and I were the only believers in our family on both sides. So he's starting a legacy, a legacy of faith. And so to people watching this, I just want you to know that you can be made whole. If your heart is wounded, if you have an orphan spirit, if your parents were divorced, if you were abused, if you were rejected, if you were bullied, you know, you are the one that Jesus left the 99 for. Yes. Thank you, God. And I just, yeah, make your family whole, make your kids whole, and then go out and be a blessing, be a vessel, be a conduit of his holy spirit to other people yeah that's beautiful that is absolutely beautiful so what i want to do today is something we've never done and as we close out today's podcast and by the way don't stop listening now i got a couple an announcement for you here in just a moment that might will bless you so 
But before I make that announcement, I want to kind of transition and to close out this podcast uh, with a word of prayer from you, Samuel. Will you please, young Samuel, uh, lead us in prayer today? And why don't you ask the Lord to bless and encourage the people who are listening today? Sir. Okay. Father God, Lord, we thank you for what you have done. Lord, we thank you that you have crafted us. Lord, we th- Lord, we thank you that um you have given us wisdom. And God, I pray that the people that were watching this podcast, Lord, I pray for boldness. God, I pray that they would just be blessed with this. God, that they would um God, that they would be moved by your Holy Spirit. God, that you would show them that you can do it for them. Yes. God, that they can be able to feel your tangible feeling. Lord, that Mm. they can be able to sense your Holy Spirit around them. God, that this podcast wouldn't just be a podcast. God, God, that this would be a move of the Holy Spirit. God, that this would start a revival in more families. God, that this Mm. would start uh, start a revival in more kids, more parents. God, that you would um, change people's lives. God, that all that you have, God, that all that you have for them would, God, that you would do that. God, and it doesn't matter what time the people think. If they're on here and they're like, God, I'm waiting on you. You say, not right now, my child. Mm. I am waiting on you. I'm waiting for your, for your obedience. God, mm. I pray that y- you would speak to them. God, I pray that they would all just be able to feel you and sense you and hear you, God, that they would grow in their relationship with you. Mm. God, that everybody that will watch this podcast or are watching as we're saying, God, that they would just be blessed, blessed by you, God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. Powerful young Samuel. Thank you so much, Welcome. my dear friend. So, wow, what a podcast today. I greatly appreciate y'all coming to the studio today and recording this and just sharing both of your wisdom from the Lord and what the Holy Spirit has taught you guys. Well, guys, going into the weekend, I hope everyone has an incredible weekend this weekend. Spending time with the Lord, growing in your faith, and just letting Him move in your life. Maybe you're looking for a place to worship near you. Why don't you look up our Global Vision Hubs? Find a hub near you. You can find those at gvfreedomnetwork.com. Again, that is gvfreedomnetwork.com. We love you guys. We will be back next week with a new episode of the Global Vision Freedom Network podcast. God bless.